Hi there, this is Colin Warren, and today I'm going to be talking over some test data as well as some video of an electric propulsion device or Hall effect thrust I've been working on for the last few years as part of Kuzin Space. Uh, we did some testing at Nar NASA Marshall Space Flight Center uh, this past week. So this video is going to be talking over the data, uh, get some feedback from industry to see if we can get any performance aspects, and yeah, just kind of show off some really cool plasma glow discharge and just kind of finalize a project that's been in the works for the last few years. As a note, uh, these are the graphs that we'll be going over in this video, uh, but as I tried to make this video scrollable, uh, if you like to see what, and in this case, what's happening to the thrust at 50 seconds into the test, feel free to scroll on this specific YouTube video to the minute and 50 second part. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started into the testing. So for the first about 120 seconds of this video, uh, you're going to see the thruster flickering on and off. Again, as this was the first time we were starting up the thruster, uh, we didn't know how we could, you know, if there's a way for us to get a steady discharge or what those values were. Uh, so running xenon, uh, you'll see that uh, the setting I had put in, okay, 600 volts uh, to see if we could start discharge. Looks like we did, but it wasn't really a steady one, as you can see with the plasma flickering on and off. Uh, to get a kind of sense of how much you know, power is actually going into the anode part, um, look at the thruster power reading. This will be derived from the actual anode voltage reading and the anode current reading uh, readout. Uh, so that'll give you a sense of, okay, for this given plasma, what's kind of the power that's coming out of it for a given voltage and discharge current. Note also that there's about 2 amps of current going through the inductor magnets, which corresponds to roughly 200 gauss at the exit part of the chamber, or at least in the radial magnetic field uh, part of the Hall thruster. So other than a few really interesting plasma discharges, nothing super exciting happens for the next 30 or 40 seconds. I ended up actually turning off the voltage partway through so you won't really see a whole lot as you can see from the power reading and the voltage setting parts. Uh, but in about 20 seconds or so, you'll get to see a really cool plasma discharge which uh, pans out in the thruster power reading chart as you see. All right, so in a few seconds, you'll see the real light show begin. So for the next 30 seconds, you'll see a pretty steady discharge, as you can see from the thruster power reading. Uh, the voltage ends up going down and the current reading ends up going up. Uh, the magnets aren't on for this part, and I didn't really notice any significant thrust for this part. Um, so I don't really know if this was doing anything other than just general discharge. A couple points worth mentioning. Again, this gas is xenon. Uh, the flow rate of it is 20 sickums or 2 milligrams per second and these variables did not change at all throughout the test that you see in this particular video. Alright, so this final part you'll see me try a different voltage level. As you can see, I tried different voltage levels throughout this test. And then I'll actually turn on the Maddox halfway through. You should see initially a glow discharge, and then what I think is actually the Hall effect occurring, because you'll actually see a significant jump up in thrust in the level. Uh, I'll show a picture I took of the actual data, and then as well as the Excel data uh, as it happens. All right, so right about now, you'll see a very subtle purple hue coming out of the thruster, which uh, signifies that there's a glow discharge happening. And then once I turn on the magnets, you'll see a pretty significant jump in power and the thrust. Uh, the thrust, I have both the readout uh, from the Excel sheet as well as the picture I took from the actual board uh, as we were measuring the measurements. 
And then you'll see the wire holding the tantalum filament burn out because we're just putting too much power through it. Wire's dead. So we'll quickly talk about some of the performance aspects of this thruster. Uh, the short answer is I think we've successfully made the world's worst Hall Effect thruster while still being able to technically call it a Hall Effect thruster. Uh, that being said, uh, we noticed a thrust of 1.4 millinewtons. Something to note though is that when we zeroed the thrust in, we actually zeroed it with 2 milligrams a second worth of xenon already running through it. So this thrust value wasn't calculating in the cold gas thrust we were getting from, well, you know, not turning on the thruster. Um, we roughly estimate because we weren't able to actually go back and get some old data points because well, we got so excited we forgot to actually record some of the data with it running cold. Cold gas thrusters with xenon run about 30 seconds of specific impulse roughly. So if we know, okay, we have two milligrams per second worth of xenon going through, we can say, okay, we have roughly about half a millinewton or 0.6 with a cold gas thrust contributing. So overall, we have, we guess, about two millinewtons of thrust coming out from both the cold gas component and the actual electric part being turned on. When you put in the efficiency for that, which is just thrust squared over your mass flow rate times your power in, uh, you get out that you, we got an anode efficiency of about 1% which of course won't be getting us any prizes anytime soon, but we do see, okay, great, we <laughs> we did turn it on. There's better questions about whether this would have been better as a hot gas thruster. Um, other things you can note too, if we have, okay, the thrust over the mass flow rate, uh, you can get your exhaust velocity from that. So we had two millinewtons of two milligrams per second, which gave us about a thousand meters per second exhaust velocity, which for specific impulse, you divide that by roughly 10, and we got a specific impulse of 100 seconds, which I guess is slightly better than the 30 seconds we would've gotten if we had just kept the whole thing cold. But you know what? It's the first step, and the very fact that they actually lit and we actually got thrust out of it uh, was already a win enough for me. So with that, I wanted to say thank you very much to NASA, uh, especially John Danikic, uh, Adam Martin, Ken, and Patrick for all of their help at the facility and even giving us the opportunity to test with them. Thank you to the whole team for being part of this journey and for continuing on the work. Uh, excited to see where they go with that. Also want to give a big shout out to the NASA Space Technology Mission Directorate Center for Innovation Fund for providing the funding to allow us to test here. Also shout out to so many other people, uh, Blue Origin, uh, the Wazoo Voiland College of Engineering for making this possible, Alaska Airlines, and so, so many others who I may not remember your name, but it, this project wouldn't have been able to have been completed without the support and help of so many other people. So thank you. Uh, first Plasma, here's to many more.